I want to take my time on, on issues around less about monetary policy and more about uh, regulation. Um, you know, I think we can never presume that we're out of the woods on financial stability, as we saw with the New York Community Bank yesterday, the stock plunge and then the capital infusion. Um, you know, one area that I raised with you a year ago, I want to re-raise today, and, and that is um, non-bank lending. Um, the fact that non-bank lending in terms of to non-financial firms now is actually e exceeding regulated bank lending. And let me be clear, I've got, you know, the non-bank financial sector has done productive things in, in our society over the years. But uh, when folks like uh, former New York Fed President um, Dudley and former Fred Gro uh, Governor Grosner recently said that um, they had worries about this reliance on the non-bank financial sector could lead to overall economic lack of stability. I guess, uh, what do you think, I've got a three-part question, what do you think are the risks as we see this push-out effect of, of more and more lending going outside the regulated perimeter to the non-bank sector? Um, how much do we really know about these institutions? And one of the things, uh, you, they have very smart, sophisticated investors, but if those very smart, sophisticated investors said, well, hey, we don't like the lending profile right now, and we want you to not make any additional lend loans for the next six to nine months, um, do you think our system would be able to pick up the slack? So um, we have the regulated banking system where you've got a lot of transparency, you've got deposit insurance, you've got uh, access to uh, you know, the discount window and all those things regulation. If you go outside that, most of the funding that we see now in these vehicles is sophisticated investors who are actually limited partners, mm -hmm. meaning they can't pull their money out. They, they're, they've signed a contract. They've funded these deals. And so what you see now in the non-bank financial sector is, is a sig significantly it's, it's that kind of thing. So it's, it doesn't have the run risk. The, the, the point is the bigger it grows and the more diverse it gets, it is happening outside the regulatory perimeter. And you worry that when, when there is another crisis, you'll be surprised, but there will be ways that that, that that financial structure, too, can break down, and it does break down in ways we don't anticipate. So I think we need to be smart about the way uh, about intermediation is absolutely moving out of the banks, into the capital markets, and into non-bank financial institutions. That's what's been happening for a long, long time. I just think we need to be thoughtful about understanding where the risks are emerging. Right. And, and that sophisticated investor may rightfully say, hey, we don't want you to lend anymore for a X period of time. But that may then, at that moment of crisis, mean that the, the lending capabilities completely dry up. And I, one of the things I never completely understood until I got a little better explanation recently, why the large regulated banks weren't more complaining about this non-bank lending, but I, as I got to understand a little bit more of the, um, and again, I'm not per se criticizing on the non-bank lending, but many of the regulated banks actually lend to these large institutions, so they make, you know, they make money off of those relationships, and maybe that's, again, an explanation of why they're not being more, more critical. I only got 40 seconds left, but I would like to come back to uh, another thing that we've talked about a lot, um, and that is the question of use of the discount window. Um, I believe one of the original tools that the Fed had, uh, I know banks say, well, we're, we're concerned about the stigma. I've got some legislation that would actually require uh, mandatory use uh, of the, the discount window. I'd love your comment on that. Uh, and also just the idea that having the, the mechanics of the discount window open, potentially even 24-7, because we saw what SVB, they, one, they didn't know how to use it, but two, uh, if they wanted to use it in the non-bank hours, could they get access? There's a lot of work to do on the discount window. You're absolutely right. It needs to be brought up technologically into the modern age. Uh, we need to do more to eliminate the stigma problem, and we need to make sure that, that banks are you know, actually able to use it when, when they need to use it. And, and you know, those things, uh, that, that's, a, that's a broad work program that, that we're, we're on right now, and uh, it's very important.